Welcome to the Combi Cam Ultra. Yeah. So this cool dual lock was sent to me by West Coast Picks. Yeah, buddy, thank you very much for it. It's quite an interesting lock. Yeah, in this video I want to show you how to operate this lock and I want to show you all the features. Then we will pick it and decode it and finally I will take it apart and show you what's inside. So how does this lock work? Yeah, it's a, a cam lock that can be um, operated or unlocked by either entering the right code or by using a key. With both methods the plug will turn, that's the part with the nut currently uh, screwed on. It will turn only at 90 degree because of this uh, limiter here and this cutout. And you have to screw on the, the plate and the plate will then turn of course at 90 degree and unlock or lock whatever uh, you will <clears throat> you want to secure with this lock. So let's focus on the uh, combination part first. Currently I have entered the right code and this means I can now turn the knob from the locked to the unlocked um, position and you will see how the plug turns at the same time and the plate would then turn also and secure or um, open whatever is secured with this lock. In the, um, in the state where the right code is entered you can push this button to change the combination. If the wrong code is entered you can't. So let's uh, change the combination. And when I release the button it's still um, in the unlocked state so you can turn the uh, knob. Um, but now when I shuffle the wheels again and let's assume I have forgotten the, the combination I am not screwed up because there is a very interesting uh, and helpful feature if you can um, take out the lock um, from wherever it is um, mounted and therefore you can use the key for example so let's do this quickly. You can see I can turn the inner part. <clears throat> now also the cam will turn. So this allows me to open up the, the drawer for example and then unmount the lock. And now if I wanna um, find the right or the, the correct code, I have to use this uh, antenna here that I have to stick in these holes and now, when I do this, and when I turn now the wheel, it makes a click and the antenna, this probe here, goes a little bit deeper. And there's a, there's a little hole here inside when the right code is entered and the, the probe will, will fall into this hole. Let's do this for the second and for the third. We go and for the last and now you can see we have um, determined the right uh, code <clears throat> it's 1543 and we can now press the button and change the code to something we will hopefully better remember yeah so that's about how this lock works you can as I said turn the knob when the right code is entered or you can use the key to turn the plug as well. In both cases, this part here at the end will turn at the 90 degree angle and uh, turn the, uh, this plate here to unlock or lock whatever is secured with this lock. Yeah, so now <clears throat> we come to part two, decoding and picking. So first I wanna pick the tubular lock. Um, it's a tubular lock with seven pins. Here is the key. Lock works and is locked up. For tensioning I use this fancy tension tool. So, and for picking the pins a regular, <clears throat> a regular Peterson knife. 
change the angle a little bit. <clears throat> and you just go around in circle and push on every uh, pin. Don't neglect the one that's under the tension wrench. Now I feel a little turn on the core. More turn on the core. I think we're getting closer. We're done. So it turns 90 degree. You can see it's now unlocked. I lock it back up and now I will uh, clamp it in a vise and change my camera setup so that we can now try to decode this lock. So here is my camera setup. I hope you can see well. For decoding a combination lock, you have to apply tension to the locking mechanism. And with this lock, you have two theoretical choices. One is pressing the button. Turned out not to be a good choice, so the feedback is not usable. And turning the knob, applying rotation force on the knob, and that's the right choice. But using the fingers all the time on this knob, it's quite exhausting. And so I will use a tension wrench that goes in this uh, slot here and therewith it's quite um, comfortable to tension. So but before we need to uh, change the code, so currently zero, 0, 0 is the um, entered code and let's change that. Yeah, that should be enough. Release the button and shuffle the wheels again. Now we have an unknown code, so let's apply tension and for uh, turning the wheels I will use a screwdriver because this is again much more comfortable than just to use the finger. Let's zoom in, the show can begin. Okay, we are searching for feedback, uh, a wheel that gives feedback while applying rotation force on the knob and um, it should be a, a wheel that gives um, where the feedback changes uh, between across the numbers. Um, there are wheels that show um, constant resistance. These are not the one that I want to um, investigate in, but it turned out that the first wheel is the right choice for, uh, for starting. So I turn it and observe and feel what's going on on the knob. There is counter rotation on the knob and I think around five or so we got a bit of movement into the right direction so I leave it at five. Continue with the second wheel and it's it's loose here at one. Let's keep that in mind and see if there is a better number. There is a lot of resistance here around six. Eight is mm, also a good number, I, I think. So eight or one. So let's continue with the next wheel. So the next wheel shows almost no resistance. So let's change this to one. What did I feel here? Hmm. Ah, one. I think ah, the resistance has increased when I changed the code to 1 for the second wheel. And I have to hold the second wheel because otherwise changing the third wheel will also change the second wheel.
maybe around four is a good number. So let's check this the last wheel. Maybe six. Okay. That was the first path uh, to a second path, one, I would say, maybe eight. Maybe one, zero. I felt a bit of uh, movement on the, on the, uh, on the knob. That was counter rotation, so eight. Yeah, I believe it's it's I strongly believe now that it's eight. I think it's one. I hold it again. Around four, I would say. That's really exciting. Seven, change. I can feel it that we are really, really close. One, seven. So maybe do another complete path and we are open. Cool. One, 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 seven. All right. So. Quite a fun lock to decode, but uh, now it's time to look inside. Okay, in order to take this lock apart, we need to uh, remove the clip that's inserted here. Then we can pull out the, the core. Then we can open up the cover and uh, yeah, look inside. Okay, so this can take a while. So here we have all the parts of the lock, the four outer wheels, the four inner wheels, the button to uh, push on to change the coat and the rod with the bumps and the spring. Let's closely inspect one of the inner wheels and the rod. You can see the shape of the inside of the inner wheel and this shape matches perfectly the structure or the shape of the bumps on the rod. There is a little one on the top now and two bigger ones left and right. And you can slide through the inner wheel only if it's aligned correctly, not like so, but like this. And now the right uh, code is entered for this, um, for this wheel and you can push on the on the rut and it is then depressed goes inside the housing and you can turn the knob yes yeah, so now let me show you how the inner and the outer wheel are connected here is one outer wheel and you can see the inner structure with the grooves there is a groove for every uh, digit and for one digit uh, the groove goes in this or this this pin here or this this bump here goes in one of these grooves and depending on which groove it goes in the respective uh, digit is selected so that's the way to uh, select the right code or to, to select the code um, you can see they are now uh, connected inner and outer wheel are now connected and 
Then it's also clear how to change the combination with the uh, button here. So now let, let's imagine that's um, installed in the in the housing. That means that the position of the outer wheel is fixed, maybe like so. Um, and when turning the outer wheel, also the inner wheel turns. Turns. Now push on the button. It goes like so, and now the outer wheel can spin freely. And because of the spring, when you now release the button, it slides back and now inner and outer wheel are connected again um, at the new number. So that's the way how to change the combination. And there is another feature we can see. That's the little uh, cutout here on the inner wheel. And that's what you feel with the antenna when you go through these holes. Then you can uh, feel this, this uh, cutout here, this gap. And when the inner wheel is uh, positioned like this, then it's um, the right position for the for the rod to slide through. Actually, it's uh, yeah, it's the right code. All right, so that was the inside of the um, uh, of the combination lock. But we still have one uh, part to uh, take apart further, and I've seen that there's a screw. So I haven't done this before. Uh, let's do this together. partially reassembled the lock to show you its function. It consists mainly of these two parts that interact with each other, the knob with two cutouts or two grooves and the inner part that uh, contains the seven pins and two pieces that stick out which go uh, in these cutouts. And as long as the pins are not set to the correct height, these two pieces um, that stick out cannot be pushed in. Other one. So that means that um, at this state, with not the correct key um, inserted, the, the knob will stay where it is and cannot be turned. But now when we use the right key and push it in, then we can also push in these uh, pieces here and then the knob can turn. So now how do how do these uh, pins look like? These are, uh, I use that one. These are one part pins. So they consist only of one solid piece with a, a specific height here that matches to the cutout on the key. Let's see if I can align this correctly like so. so. These two um, heights shall match so that then when you push in the key this pin is set to the correct height and you can uh, observe what the pin does when I push it in. And If it reaches the correct height that's, the, that's too deep, that's not deep enough, that's just about right, that's what the key does, then this pin is set to the correct height and um, this piece here can then uh, push in if all the pins, all these three pins are set to the correct height. Yeah, and that's very interesting. We have two of these uh, pieces um, and responsible uh, for this piece to um, uh, retract are three pins. Same on the other side. But this seventh pin, for me, this does not have any purpose. So that's just for yeah, for fun or for the sake of completeness. 
I think it doesn't affect um, um, the security of the lock. So basically we have only a six pin um, tubular core. Yeah. So that was the little adventure with the Combi Cam Ultra sent to me by West Coast Picks. Yeah, buddy, thank you very much for this uh, little adventure. So much fun in one lock. Decoding, picking and disassembling. Very, very cool. Yeah, buddy, thanks again for this great lock. Everybody else, thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and decoding and disassembling. Yeah, thanks for watching. Happy picking. Bye bye. And I will have a lot of fun to reassemble this lock.